An Audi R8? I've seen it before. Quattro drive? So what? And under the bonnet, a V10, right? Hang on a minute. Was that V10? It's all in the name. No more, no less. The R8 V10 is the fastest, most powerful serial production car in Audi history. This thing really goes. I want more, more, more of this. In times of old banger bonus and reduced working hours, this is a bit like swimming against the tide on four wheels. Performance, 525 horsepower. Top speed, 316, 0 to 100, 3.9 seconds. This Audi is definitely hoping for a place in sports car heaven. Nice, but it can get pretty crowded up there. Whoops. Patrick Simon investigates. Absolutely brilliant. It's a bit reserved. Pushes could have more. It could be a smidgen more, right? Only been in the car for five minutes and moaning already. Just wait and see, Mr. Simon. It revs up to 8,700 RPM before you have to change gear. So it should be screaming in that awesome way, like a Lamborghini does. der bekanntermaßen stimmlich ganz weit oben rangiert. Well, the Audi sound is not that bad either, is it? A bit austere maybe, but... Yeah. Just whack it into the corners. If you read about it on paper, R8, well, yes, we know all about that. What's new? V10. Sounds a good idea. And then we have a look what's behind it. Dry sump lubrication means the engine can sit very low down because the oil sump is so much lower down. Double wishbone front and rear. Midship mounted engine, obviously. And this is what makes it special, what makes the R8 Audi's handling so great in general. The axle load distribution is almost 50-50. And the way the car handles when cornering is absolutely impressive. What? Was that a compliment we heard? Let's start with the looks then. Definite highlight, literally, the full LED headlights, the first manufacturer to include these as part of the standard parcel. The front apron is all elegance in black. Only available for the V10, 10-spoke 19-inch alloys. The Audi side blades are even more flared than the V8s. The rear end is all black too. The diffuser is flanked by two oval tailpipes. The crowning glory, the majestic V10. The 5.2-liter aggregate generates 530 newton meters of torque at 6,500 RPM. Like a rocket, the R8 accelerates from 0 to 200 in, get this, 12 seconds. New to me, the R-Tronic. I have to say, I don't know if I'd really pay 7,400 euros for one of these. Surprisingly, R-Tronic and all these paddles at the steering wheel, you tend to go for the paddles straight away. This is the first car that's got these paddles, but I'd actually prefer to use the lever. Which I then don't do, as it's all the wrong way round. I feel the sequence. Usually you pull to shift up, and push to shift down. And here it's exactly the other way round. Shame. I'd say I keep the 7,400 euros and buy a manual one. And I spend the money I've saved on a fortnight's holiday. Just where Patrick intends to holiday for 7,000 euros for a fortnight remains his secret. Whatever, we agree with him as far as the R8's manual transmission is concerned. 
Well, I have to say the car is simply the obvious next stage. Someone said, let's add two cylinders. Let's take 100 horsepower more, up the torque a bit, granted, another 100 kilos in weight. Everything that made the V8 R8 so impressive as far as I'm concerned, all that has been developed further, and I have to admit successfully too. But to pay 35,000 euros more for the whole thing? Hmm, not exactly a bargain, is it? Not only does the Audi drive like a super sports car, it costs as much too. 142,400 euros is the price for the basic R8 V10. Not much else wrong with it, apart from... What I don't understand is, we're driving an Audi V10 sports car along some Spanish A road to try it out. Come on, this is a sports car. It belongs on the track. The Ascari racetrack would have been just round the corner. Not the R8's fault, is it? Still, just like its baby brother, the V10 midship mounted engine is a missile in terms of vehicle dynamics, only with even more power. A serious threat to more than a few of its rivals.